Hi, boys and girls. I am Mrs. Armstrong, and I teach elementary art at Sequoia School in Claremore, Oklahoma. I am so glad you are here today to join me. Um, if you're one of my earlier students, you know that whenever I dress up, then that means I'm going to be introducing a new artist. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to introduce an artist. We're going to kind of go over some of his skills, and then we're going to do a, a masterpiece. So um, since you're not in my classroom, then you, you don't have any clues around you. So I'm going to give you three clues at who I am. I am a French artist. I invented a new way of painting called Impressionist Art. And I loved painting nature. So think about those three hints. I'm French, Impressionist Art, and nature. If you guess Claude Monet, you're correct. Claude Monet was born in 1840 in Paris, France, and he died in 1926 at the age of 86. When Claude was little and he was around five years old, they moved to an area in France called Le Havre. And Le Havre was right along the Seine River where it meets the English Channel. So this is La Havre right here. And they say that when Claude was small, growing up in this area, that if the sun was shining, he was always outside. He was running through the fields. He was climbing trees in the woods. He was fishing in the river or boating. And they think that because of growing up in this area, that that is what has influenced a lot of his artwork. Let's look at three of Monet's types of paintings that he painted. Seascapes, landscapes, and of course, gardens. And if you look, they all have to do with nature. Monet had a very unique way of painting. And so the question that we're going to answer today is what, what made Monet's paintings different? We talk about this a lot in class, that if you want to become a famous artist, you have to do something totally different than any other artist has done. Because if you're copying someone else's and your paintings look just like theirs, then you're not going to get known. So Claude had to come up with a way of painting different. Well, if you think about the art that was before Claude Monet, it probably wasn't too difficult to come up with something different. We're going to look at a Leonardo da Vinci painting that you guys are familiar with, and it's called the Mona Lisa. And these earlier artists before Monet, they had to make their own paint. They would use minerals from the earth, They'd mix it with oils. And so a lot of their paint were earth tones. Their paintings were dark. They were serious. They had details because of cameras back then. So if you wanted a portrait, if you wanted a, a picture of someone in your house, then it needed to look like that person. And so there was a lot of details. And most of the paintings before Monet painted indoors in their studio. Well, when we look at Monet's artwork and compare it to the paintings that were before him, the artwork that was before him, he didn't have a problem coming up with something totally different because he loved bright colors. He painted outdoors. He would carry his easel, his paint and he would set up outside. He used very large brush strokes when he painted. Didn't have a lot of detail. Um, a lot of the, when we look at some of the paintings on the next couple of slides, you'll see that their faces don't have a lot of detail. It looks like who they are, but if you look at it really close, um, you'll see, see those big brush strokes and how there's not a lot of detail. And his 
way of painting, he wanted to catch the sunlight in his paintings. And that did become difficult because the earth is moving. And so throughout the day, it looks like the sun is changing places. Well, if he was outside painting a certain area and then the sun is changing positions, the shadows are different. And so painting outside did become frustrating to Monet. So he would start a painting at a certain time of day and then he would stop and he'd go back outside the next day and start painting again because he wanted that sunlight in the same place. So sometimes he actually had more paintings going than, than just one. He might paint one in the morning, he might go start one in the afternoon, and he would kind of use that in his schedule. So this one is, is titled Impression Sunrise. This is where that Impressionist art actually took off, was because of this painting. This is how Monet envisioned that sunrise at that particular time on that day. And you can tell that day was kind of foggy. Um, you can see the roundness of the sun. It's shining on the water. There's not any detail on the people in the boats. It's kind of a silhouette. And so the definition of Impressionist art says, Impressionist art is known for its distinctive brush strokes, the lighting, the colors, and the everyday, everyday subjects. And so because of this painting and, and him taking them to art show, shows, this is where that Impressionist art term started. Now at the beginning when Monet were, was taking some of his paintings to art shows, he got a lot of negative feedback. They said it was too blurry. They made fun of him and told him that it looked like he'd left it out in the rain because of the big brush strokes and uh, not a lot of the detail. So it took a little while, but that didn't stop Monet from painting. He loved those bright colors. That was just his way of painting with the big brush strokes. And we're going to take a little bit closer look at that in just a minute. And he kept going and it did take off. And then there were a lot of his art friends that kind of started painting in the same way. Um, down here, I have what impression means. It says it's the first effect of an experience upon the mind. And I think of that as how you feel at that moment when you see something. So this is how he felt that morning that he was watching that sunrise. And so when you look at some of Monet's paintings, he wants you to have a feeling about them that makes you happy, that it's not a serious painting. It's an everyday painting. And they're just wonderful paintings to look at. Okay, so let's look at how his big, large brush strokes worked. So Monet used a paint palette and he would put his paints on his paint palette. Now, he was very poor, so he may have only been able to afford three colors. And if you have at least the primary colors, the red, the yellow, and the blue, then you can make all the other colors. So, if he only started with those three colors, he would pick up those colors and he would begin to dab. He had like a dab technique or those large brush strokes. And then if he picked up some yellow and he put that beside the blue, he would kind of dab those together. And yellow and red make orange. So he may not have had orange on his paint palette, but by the time that he got finished and he painted, you could see that orange color because your eyes kind of put those colors together. And so again, if you look at this painting of his wife Camille and their son Jean, did he use bright colors? He painted outdoors. He used large brush strokes. Not a lot of detail if you look at their faces. Now, you can tell that this is Camille. You can tell that this is his son, Gene. But if you look up really close, you can see that there's not a lot of detail. And again, catching the sunlight. So you can tell the sunlight was behind her because there's some shadowing in the front of her.
Here are four more paintings of Monet. He loved his garden. He loved Japanese artwork, and he actually designed the bridge in his garden off of a Japanese bridge. Again, landscapes, some seascapes, and more of his gardens. Now, not only did Monet, the, the way that the sun changed throughout the day, and he had more than one painting going at one time, Monet would paint the same subject over and over and over, but he would paint them at different seasons. So I think this is the next one. This is his haystacks. So this is like the same haystack throughout the year, but it might be in the fall, it might be in the summer or the spring or the winter, and he would just paint the same thing over and over and over. Towards the end of his life, um, he had a series of his water lily paintings, and that was his last series that he did. And this is a variety of Monet's water lilies. And those are probably, the, to me, the most famous, that when you see a painting of Monet's water lilies, you'll know that that's a Monet painting. If you, if you ever get the chance, to get to a museum and see an original Monet, try to get up as close as possible to it and really look at those large brush strokes because even though you're seeing this green, you're still going to see the yellow, um, you're gonna see the blue, and then how it mixes in the middle to make that green. All right, so here is the color wheel that we're gonna kind of review so that we can get started on our masterpiece. So this large triangle that's here in the center is representing the primary colors. So as long as you have red, yellow, and blue, then you're going to be able to make your secondary color colors, which are your orange, your green, and your violet or your purple. And then if you wanna go further with that, you can start mixing your secondary colors together. You can mix them with the primary colors and then you're going to get your intermediate colors around the side. So um, we're gonna move over here to the drawing board. Does it need to be any closer? All right. And for our masterpiece today, we're just going to do a simple vase with flowers, and we're going to try to create those colors from the color wheel. We're gonna do a red one, um, and then we'll do the blue in the center of that, and those two will mix and make purple, and then we'll do our yellow, and then in the middle of that will be green, and then we're going to do our red and yellow, and the last one will be orange. We'll just do some simple steps on that, and I will help you come up with drawing your vase. Now, you're going to need a piece of paper and... and some crayons. We're going to modify this. If we were in my classroom, of course, we'd use paint and we would mix those paints to make those secondary colors. But since you're at home and I'm not for sure who all has paint at home. So if you will just grab your crayons and let's get out the three primary colors. You're going to need to get out your red. I have them down here. You're going to need to get out your primary colors your red, your blue, and your yellow. So get those ready. Now, since I am drawing up here, I am going to be drawing large so that you can see it. Um, if you've got just a piece of white paper or notebook paper, either one will work. Let's stand them tall. So we're going portrait style. If you want to draw with the pencil, you can. If I drew with the pencil, you're not going to be able to see it. So I am act I'm actually going to draw with a marker, and I may change out my colors so that um, it'll be whatever color you're going to color with. So I'm going to draw the vase with black, and then on, on my flowers, I'm going to draw them the color that they're going to be. So that'll come and help you out. So if you want to come up with your own vase, that's fine. Let's think about uh, drawing the vase on the bottom half, and then the flowers will be on the top half. So draw large, don't draw too small. And I'm just kind of 
thinking about what that base is that I brought to show. And let's kind of start in the middle of your paper. Let's do a little opening here at the top. Let's draw maybe coming in a little bit. And then let's do a kind of a rounded bottom. And close it at the bottom. And then later, if you want to put some designs on your vase, um, you can do that. The one that I showed you had, had a ribbon on it with a, a little flower hanging down. So, so we'll design that a little bit more later. All right, so switch out and let's get, let's, let's kind of follow the color wheel a little bit and let's get your red crayon. Now I'm going to be using um, markers because you'll be able to see it better. So I'm gonna draw the center of my flower and then put on my paddles and then I'll use a green to do the stem. So I'm gonna do my first flower since we have to get on six. Actually, let's do this. Let's um, maybe get a brown out. And let's do the center of our flowers and let's get those spaced where we want them. Unless you want to do this with pencil. It's up to you. So I'm going to put one flower way over here. So this is the center of my flower. There's one. I might do this flower a little higher. Two. Maybe a little lower. Three. We're doing six. Four. Five. And then this one. This one, maybe over here, we'll have it coming off to the side. I'll go ahead and put the initials in the center, so that way we'll remember what color we want to do them. So this one's going to be red. So I'm going to put in an R, just in case we run out of time, too. Then that way you'll know. Skip this one. Let's go to this one, blue. Skip this one. Let's go to this one and do yellow. Now, if we were to mix red and blue, that's going to make purple. So we're going to put purple in the middle of those two. If we mix blue and yellow, it's going to make green. So I'm going to put a G in this one. And then going back to the beginning, red and yellow is going to be orange. I'm going to put an O in that one. There we go. So that'll be the center of our flowers, and we have it spaced the way we want it spaced. Now go back and get your red crayon, and I, and I have my red marker. And I'm just going to do a simple flower, like the five, six-petal flower. If you want to do sunflowers, if you want to do roses, whatever you're wanting to do. But I'm just going to do, like, the daisy-type flower. So put on your petals. Draw big. Okay, and then let's go Go ahead and do, um, let's go on to blue, get your blue crayon. Draw on your petals. And you can probably just be doing this with crayon. It's okay if you make a mistake. We can always fix it. And then get your yellow. Let's get our primary colors done first. Okay, now go ahead and get in your crayon box and get out your secondary colors, which is your purple, your green, and your orange. And let's draw with those three. So I'm going to need my purple. I wish I could do it with crayon too, but I tried it and it just didn't show up on the camera very well. Marker shows up a lot better. Now, if this bumps into your other flower, that's okay. Just kind of tuck it underneath. And then green. This one's going to go under. 
and then grab your orange. And there's our six flowers. If you want to go back and put the stems in, um, get your green crayon and just kind of bring those into your base. Got some layering going on, so try to tuck those in. Got my little orange flower over here. And then I'll bring this one right here too. And then if you want to add leaves, you, you can add some leaves to kind of fill up the base. Now, we're going to try to color these, though, with just the three primary colors. So, when you color your red one, you can use your red crayon. And since this is representing a Monet painting, we can kind of color any direction you want to color. Doesn't have to be perfect. We can kind of show some of that white. We want it to kind of look like an Impressionist style. So, just try to stay in the lines. It's kind of a scribble. I know we don't get to scribble much in art, but today, since we're representing Monet, and it's supposed to kind of look like his paintings, using large brush strokes, we can kind of color different directions. I'm going to color this really fast because I'm wanting to get to one of the intermediate or one of the secondary colors. All right, so I'm going to finish this one up, then I'm going to move on. I don't know if we'll have enough time to finish the entire picture, but what I've done, I have made a Facebook group on Facebook, and I will show you what it's under. It's Mrs. Armstrong's art class. It has to do with Sequoia Elementary. Go ahead and change to your blue. And after you finish your picture, if you want to show it to me, you can get an adult to help you find that group, take a picture, and you can send it to me. You can post it to me on Facebook. Just tell me your name when you post it. And if you're not from Sequoia, I'd love to know where you're from. Now, I'm going to kind of move on. After this one, we're going to go to purple. And I want you to try to use just your primary colors to create your purple. It's a little bit harder to mix crayon than it is paint, but we can, we can try. So I'm going to move on up and finish this one. Trying to stay in the lines. And when you're done with your flowers, you can come back in and you can color the centers brown if you want to, or change them to yellow or orange, depending on what you're wanting. All right, so we're wanting to make purple. And we know that red and blue make purple. So if you come up here, now if you don't like doing it this way, just grab your secondary color of purple and go ahead and just color it purple. But I'd like for you to try a little bit on a couple of petals maybe on mixing. So color it a little bit red, or you can start it with blue. It doesn't matter. Probably purple is one of the hardest colors to make too, so it may not look the greatest. And then color lightly with your blue on top. And it's going to look a little purple. It's not the prettiest purple, but it is representing purple. I'm not going to finish this one. I'm just going to do a couple of petals. I'm going to move over here to green. We're going to start with our blue. I'm going to do a couple of petals of blue on the green. And then the other color that mixes in with blue to make green is yellow. You just kind of rub it on, and again, kind of looks like a A, because you can still see the blue, you can see the yellow, but your eyes will kind of blend that together to create that green. And then to make orange, we'll do a couple petals of 
red. And we will add what color with it to make our orange, yellow. Add your yellow on top. And it's going to make that orange came out really good. So red and yellow. So you can finish your flower. And then if you want, you could just reach into your box and pull out a intermediate color. Turquoise, turquoise is one of my favorite colors. They call it blue-green. And maybe you could color your base with one of your intermediate colors. And you can design the inside here if you want. Um, if you want to write Monet's name so that you know it's a Monet, I'm going to do the M with red and then the O with purple, the N with blue, the E with green, with yellow and underline it with orange. There we go. So hopefully you'll get yours finished. You'll take a picture. You will send it to me. And can I turn the smart board on one more time? Because I've got my Facebook page up here that I'd love to, for you guys to find. Can you turn the camera over here? There we go. Look for Mrs. Armstrong's art class, Sequoia Elementary, Claremore, Oklahoma. When you finish, have an adult take a picture, um, send it to me on Facebook. Make sure your name is with it, maybe your grade, and then the school that you're from, especially if you're not from Sequoia. Thank you for joining us, and um, I'll see you next Tuesday at 9 o'clock.